I like to come out in the morning. Watch the birds on the bird feeders. And listen to the blackbird going in and out of the nest just above my head. And listen to the sounds of the morning. Lots of sheep action on the hill opposite. And at this time of day, I can usually hear the bird song without any cars on the road. Occasional one. Someone going to work early. There's a woodpecker on the bird nuts right now. It likes the peanuts. Jabs away with its big beak through the mesh, gets the peanuts. And then there are two feeders that have got sunflower hearts in. And they usually get a lot of finches on them. I don't see any at the moment. The sun's just coming up. I've got my first coffee of the day. I sometimes do this and then go back to bed for an hour. There's the blackbird. I tried to film it, but it's very hard to film. You can hear it maybe. It runs around on the grass and collects little grubs and worms. Both of them, both the both the parent birds. There it goes. Out it goes. I wonder how many they're feeding in there. It's absolutely beautiful weather here at the moment. We're having a bit of a heat wave here in the north of England. So I put this dress on, which I really, really like. A friend of mine made it for me. And I wondered why I don't wear it more. And the reason why I don't wear it more is it hasn't got any pockets. And I think that a dress or any item of clothing without pockets is um, pretty useless, really. <laughs> so what I decided to do, I've got this dress here, which I like a lot. And it's got really, really, really nice pockets. So I'm going to take a pattern of the pockets and I'm going to make pockets like this one and make a slit in the side of the dress here and then put a pocket inside. Now I haven't got any of this fabric, but I have got this big stash of fantastic K facet fabric, free spirit fabric. So I'm going to choose something from this pile here. And I think it's an opportunity to do something quite funky, don't you? What about pockets like that, for instance? So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, pockets like that. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to make two new pockets to fit in this dress and they'll be on the inside so if I put them in really carefully you'll not see them but you might see a little flash of colour when I put something in my pocket. Okay let's do it.
Okay, so I've unpicked the seams between the pins that I marked there, and now I'm going to pin one half of the pocket to the seam. It's tempting to sew the pocket together now, but don't do that because it's really hard to sew it in when it's completed. So I'm going to sew the two pieces in and then sew round it. You dressmakers out there know exactly what I'm doing, don't you? Now, on the dress that I've taken the pattern from, the pockets are French seamed, which is rather nice. So I think I'm going to try and do that if I can, which means that you sew the right sides together turn it inside out and then sew round that seam again so that all the raw edges are enclosed. But now what I've got to make sure is that I have this pretty part of the pocket in the right place and so that my pocket doesn't look like that. And that means thinking a bit. So I've got a feeling, I think if I pin it like that, that's got to be right, hasn't it? Yes, that's right. Famous last words. So I'm just going to pin this in here then. And then just sew this in. Now, if you don't see this piece of film, it'll be because I've unpicked it and done it again. But I don't want that the wrong side on the inside of the pocket, do I? That's not going to happen, Kate. It's all right. Don't worry about it. So this one goes on this side exactly matching at the top. I have given myself a generous seam allowance for two reasons. One, so that I don't mind too much if I don't line it up at the top, but two, I like big pockets. So I'm going to pin these right sides together here. So that's one pocket in. I'll get the second one in now. And I hope you like the choice I made. There were loads to choose from here. About um, a year ago or so, I bought a yard bundle of Free Spirit fabric. I totally splashed out on it. I love it all, I really do. And it's interesting that the three that I picked out were these three stripy ones to be potentially the pocket. And these are Brandon Mabley designed these. And I think they've got a name. Uh, it says it on the selvage. I'll see if I can find it. Here we go. It's called Bubble Stripe. <laughs> and I really like it. And I, I think it's lovely. In fact, maybe the whole dress could have been Bubble Stripe. But this is good. And with the way that I'm doing it, you'll get a little flash of the pocket every time I put my hands in. OK, one side, one more side to pin and then we'll go to the sewing machine and stitch them together. So someone was asking me recently about whether I make my own clothes. And I have a good friend, Becca, who uh, made this dress for me and she's made another couple of dresses too. She's a very, very good dressmaker. What makes her good? She's careful. She's incredibly careful and uh, detailed. And I'm a little bit slapdash. And so I'm not very good at um, being accurate about making clothes. But, you know, I think I'd like to get better. And I've been re recently I've been watching some channels where people recreate dresses from the past, uh, you know, the 1700s or uh, one of them was uh, someone recreating, I'm not pinning am I, recreating um, the dresses from the Cinderella live action movie. Which is a, I really like that movie with Lily James and um, Kate Blanchett as the uh, wicked stepmother. It's really good. But um, so this channel that I've been watching, if I remember, I'll leave the link to it below. She's recreated some of these dresses and I watch with great interest. I don't want to do that. Can you imagine me dressed as Cinderella? No. Or the wicked stepmother? No. The reason why I enjoy watching them is I love the care and attention to detail which I need to have if I ever think that I might make my own clothes. I don't know. I'd really like to think that I probably could do that one day. <laughs> but this is a good start, isn't it? I'm going over to the sewing machine now. Are you coming with me?
So French seams, I'm sure you know, you put the wrong sides together and sew around the outside and not a quarter of an inch, really quite near to the edge. So that's what I'm doing here. You don't want any of these edges sticking out, so I just give it a little trim round. So this is a cat you don't see very often. She's been very unwell lately. She's much, much, much better now, but she's still pretty skittish and still uh, likes to run away and hide quite a lot of the time. But I know all your hiding places, Rita. But I just wanted to talk to you about something rather remarkable that's just happened. Here on the channel, there are a hundred thousand people sitting on the lime green sofa. A hundred thousand subscribers to my Last Homely House channel, which is amazing when you think of how I started in this pavilion here about five and a half years ago, six years in September, and just started filming and talking to almost no one. And now I'm talking to a hundred thousand of you, which I think is amazing. So for those of you who are sitting comfortably on the lime green sofa, I've decided I need to uh, get some people in to extend it. And what I thought won't be quite friendly because there's so many of you, how would it be if we had two lime green sofas sitting opposite each other? That would be nice. So you'd have a neighbour on each side of you and then someone across the ways to talk to as well. <laughs> I know it's a fanciful notion, but I really do like the idea of you all sitting there on my sofa. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart so very, very much indeed for all the wonderful support you've given me over these years to get me to this point of 100,000 subscribers. I think it's amazing. And uh, thank you to each one of you. Each one of you is one of those people. It's fantastic. So thank you. And so I hope that now this cat's feeling a lot better that we might be seeing quite a lot more of her in videos. She's pretty skittish, but she'll never take Norma's place. She never will. Because if she knew that I was talking to all you people, she'd run away and hide. <laughs> she really would. So thank you. I'm going to get the table ready now because uh, John and Anna are coming round later and uh, we're going to have uh, some supper in the pavilion. Aren't we? Yes. So I'm going to go and do that now. Well, it's that time of year again, John's birthday, and so I'm going to make him his favourite meal, and he and Anna are coming this evening to sit outside in the sunshine and eat it with me.
Have you had a busy day at work, John? It has been quite a busy day. Has it? Well, have a nice rest and relax in the pavilion now for your birthday meal. Oh, very nice. Now, of course, it's flan. Yeah. So I'm going to make the first little cut and then you can decide how big you want your piece to be. Go as big as you like. Is that all? You yeah, come well, back. I have another piece if I you want to. Back. I don't want to overeat. Okay. Because it's hot, isn't it? Yeah, I've got coats. And when it's hot like this. There we go. Well done. And there's some potatoes in there. And some salad here and some salad dressing there. Looks good. Potatoes. Oh, good. I hope so. Assembling the cake at the very last minute. So hot out there. So hot. And because it's got fresh cream on, we're going to have to eat it all today. That's not um, a third each though. That would be silly. I'll just put some in a tin and, and then John can take it home with them. So I'm just filling the middle with strawberries. Making them look pretty around the outside. I wonder if you remember Arn and Carlos on the live stream gave me these chocolate hearts and I'm going to look at these and see if we can perhaps incorporate these. What do you think Anna? Oh yeah. Should, really? we, put, should we put a few of those yeah. around the outside like that? Look at that. That's very professional. Oh thank you very much. Okay, that is a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Dear, it's your birthday cake for 2023. Oh, very good, look at that. Happy birthday, darling. Hellfire. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, well done, Mother. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. And thanks for watching. Another year, another birthday cake. Uh, yeah, so thanks so much for watching. And we'll be back sometime soon with something else. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Here you go. Cut a piece. It's very tall. I don't quite know how you're going to do this, but uh, do you like your An fancy... overly elaborate cake from Mother? Like... What? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought?